Well, in terms of um, opposition, um, I know when I was on the board of the QEC, um, and this is going back to the early 2000s when I was on the board, um, we had a mission statement um, session one Saturday morning and we were being beleaguered with, you know, we had to have a mission statement, blah, blah, blah. And this went on for quite some hours. And then I was asked after lunch, um, after the haranguing of everyone, you know, now, what do you think the essence of this place is? And of course, my eyes have been rolling back in my head by then because lawyers aren't really into all of that stuff. We would write in one paragraph what consultants might take of whole book writing. <laughs> We're much more pithy than that. And um, I just said, um, it's about mothers and babies because that's all I ever saw there. And I had the wrath of God poured on my head because, of course, it wasn't about mothers and babies at all. It was about uncles, aunties, the neighbour. I mean, it was, and this is all part of cancelling and erasing women. And I didn't see that at the time, but, you know, that sort of stuck with me of how even way back then we were all being politically, or some people, not me, were being very politically correct and not really focusing on reality, that it was about mums and babies. Um, in terms of um, my protest, yeah, there was a lot of flack that we copped, but that didn't really bother me at all. Um, because there was a lot of support as well. Mm. So, and I didn't think much of Jeff Kennett, and I still don't. So, you know, water off a duck's back. And I was just glad that we were able to start something that ultimately really did help women. Um, and it should always have been, it should have gone through the day we were there. But anyway, it didn't. And um, yeah. Um, in terms of as a barrister, um, trying to help people who have, been subject to misogynistic behaviour. I've sort of seen that more as a bystander. Um, sometimes it's been directed at me, but it has, I would say that's had the most profound effect on me because you see that there is no avenue for redress. I mean, they have brought in IBAC, um, which only assists in state courts, but there was a survey done a couple of years ago um, among electoral profession and the Family Court and Federal Circuit Court came out with the most complaints about the treatment of women in particular. And what really bothers me is when I see young women who must live there and they're not been on their feet very often and getting treated appallingly by the judicial officer there, there before, that is just not on. And people, you know, you have women leaving the law, all these wonderful people who would make graduates, they're cut off at the knees and they don't come back. And um, yeah, so that's, that's something that has affected me. And the other thing that's affected me was something going back, I think about 18 years now. And that was a case, it was two lesbian mothers. It's a famous case of Ree Patrick, which some of you may have heard of. And um, the argument raged for about 11 days. It was about whether the father should spend time with the child. Um, the mother ultimately, one of the mothers took her own life six months later and took the life of the baby and the coroner found that there was a perception that she had a breakdown because of her perception of how she was treated in that family court. And, and anyone who was a barrister in those days, it wasn't a perception. It was so notorious that we we're all talking about it at the time the case was running. And, you know, the, the, the fact that a mother could have taken her own life because of the way a judge spoke to her still sits with me today and I feel very very sorry for a partner I feel sorry for her and it just should never have happened so I, I guess they're the, they're the things that really sit with me more than other other sort of negativity I've gone through and I guess the other thing is when I was in the Commonwealth and I tried to bring in different policies I was disappointed that they weren't taken up because I thought they would be very helpful to women uh, and it just showed me how far the lag was. You know, we just, uh, you think with a government body mm -hmm. that they should have been on top of all of that, but they simply weren't. So that was disappointing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Beth. Um, let's go to Bronwyn. Uh, since our campaign against the introduction of the sex self ID laws in our state, uh, Women Speak Tasmania has been targeted quite specifically by the trans lobby and their allies. Um, we were deplatformed on two occasions 
First, because of a complaint by the former Tasmanian Anti-Discrimination Commissioner, Robin Banks. Uh, Ms. Banks contacted organisers of a forum at which we were to speak and advised them that our group promoted hateful and bigoted views of trans people and the event was subsequently cancelled. Uh, second, the Religious Society of Friends, also known as the Quakers, agreed to provide a venue for a Women Speak Tasmania forum on issues raised by the proposed sex self ID laws. Um, shortly after that, they withdrew the offer for the same reason. We were disseminating anti-trans hate. Apparently a complaint was made to the Quakers by a Greens staffer and they acted on it immediately. Uh, to put this in perspective, the Quakers have quite a significant presence in Tasmania. Also, the laws were passed in the Tasmanian parliament um, without the support of the majority Liberal government. So they didn't actually have the government support. They only, the Liberals had only had a one seat majority at the time. And the speaker's vote, uh, Liberal speaker Sue Hickey got the changes over the line and they were passed in the upper house also by a very slim margin. So it was very, very contentious. Um, something that really should have been discussed in open public forums and there was concerted efforts by the Greens and by Labor to prevent that from happening. Um, supporters, supporters of the new laws specifically targeted members of parliament, especially independent members in the upper house, with personal stories told in person by a small cohort of trans adults and families with trans children. Um, they sort of went for the sympathy vote, basically. Um, we've also been attacked by a Hobart City Councillor, Holly Ewan. She's a non-binary person who regularly spits the dummy about being misgendered. Um, we've made several successful formal complaints about her behaviour, but she's completely unrepentant. She persists in referring to us as hate-filled bigots and turfs and likening us to Nazis. And she also gets occasional online support from serial litigant Bridget Clinch, everybody's favourite trans woman, who is even more offensive than she is. Uh, personally, I don't give a crap about the abuse. I'm retired and my livelihood doesn't depend on following the approved pro-trans inclusive line. But I, I can see very clearly how the, the rights of women my age, which were fought for many years ago, are now being rapidly taken away. I have three granddaughters, they're still little girls, but I don't want them to suffer because of the nonsense we're now being forced to endure. Mm. Trans women are not women. Uh, personally, it's also not a big thing, but I abandoned a master's degree in journalism two years ago because the university here is drowning in trans school aid and my position is no secret. Teachers were making random comments about gender in class and they were very reluctant to assign me a research supervisor. I figured I wouldn't be graduating anyway if I didn't get with the trans program. And I had already been ejected from the University Women's Collective for questioning their focus on the trans women members. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lose-lose situation. Absolutely amazing. Um, yep. Thank you. Uh, and okay. then we go to Janet. I had to just quickly write a list because uh, in personal terms, yeah, whatever. Um, I have lost some friends and that is definitely not a whatever, that is painful. Um, however, uh, this is a movement, not a friendship circle. So um, uh, I think one of the, the things that uh, struck me first was in 2015, um, a, f a friend and I who are known to be gender critical i.e. attached to reality, uh, organised a rally in Sydney against male violence, uh, at which Jane Gilmore and Eva Cox spoke, but the Lib Femmes uh, boycotted. So we didn't even have enough people to hold a placard each of the dead woman's name. As we walked up the street, we had no need of the police and they left. Um, I, I was present for the very childish protest at the Women's Human Rights Campaign launch in Sydney. Uh, they tried to intimidate us. They burst in, they chanted. It was ridiculous. Um, the police were called and they left. I've been banned from too many feminist groups, uh, pages, whatever, on Facebook to even keep track. Um, <laughs> I think that's hilarious, <laughs> but dreadful. 
Uh, and luckily having my own public page means it doesn't matter, I can still share your stuff and talk about it, even if you are going to ban and delete women left, right and centre. Um, I experienced some social disapproval living where I live. Um, there's a prominent trans activist up here who's recently been told about me um, and lives close by and that's moderately concerning. Uh, it's very concerning for all of us, the outcome that Beth had in Canberra. So, yes. Oh, and just briefly, the birth stuff, all the birth groups dropped at the first hurdle, except for Joya's birth, because we're me and we're all about autonomy and women. Um, and birth world is now replete with pregnant men and women unable to talk about pregnancy because it hurts the feelings of men.